Well, howdy do, buckaroos. This is Joe Layden from Cowboys and Indians Magazine. And it is my pleasure today to be talking to Brian Presley, who is the director and star of Hostile Territory, a new Western that is set to open in theaters April 22nd. And uh, Brian, this is not your first rodeo. We spoke about uh, two years ago about the uh, Great Alaskan Race. And uh, after seeing that in this film, I have to ask, uh, are you ever going to make a, a movie like on a, a sunlit tropical island? <laughs> like we'll see you wearing a, a loud Hawaiian shirt with, you know, leading a conga line of, of hula dancers behind you? Or well, it, it, as long as, as long as we can have horses and some good old shootouts, then uh, maybe so. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I figure, you know, snow is going to be, you know, your 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 our tourist trademark or something like that. Well, you know, we, my, um, several uh, members of my team and crew, they're uh, very excited about uh, doing a project that takes place not in the winter. So <laughs> I do, uh, there was days on hostile territory that we'd show up and it was zero degrees on set. And I mean, there was some cold days. Um, so that, that entire movie was pretty much outside. Um, and so we, um, just as it actually it was probably more challenging shoot than the great Alaskan race. Um, just because we had, you know, as a lot bigger cast, um, you know, the environment with kids, you know, great Alaskan race, we had kind of a controlled environment with the kids in the hospital. So everybody was comfortable where this one we're we're all outdoors for, you know, the entire shoot pretty much, pretty much. So, but I think the, uh, you know, I'm pleased with the finished product and, you know, excited for this movie to get out there. We got a little delayed with the release with COVID. Um, but, um, you know, one of my goals was to make, you know, an historical event, uh, but also a film that would appeal to the Western genre and people who love just good old Westerns. And, and so um, I think I definitely will, uh, capture the heartstrings of what I think a uh, female audience would like. And it has the, the shootout and action that the male audience would like. And so I hope people, you know, enjoy the movie. So, and also seeing, you know, historical part of um, uh, history that um, it's just, you know, crazy to, to think that, you know, there was these, you know, hundreds of thousands of kids that were put on these trains and the orphan train movement. And, um, so uh, let alone what happened post-Civil War and, you know, what, <clears throat> you know, the government did to the Native Americans um, and which left a lot of hostile Indian groups and, you know, Native American tribes that were, you know, felt like they were wronged. And so um, <clears throat> pretty, um, pretty crazy time in history, which, you know, you look at what's happening in the world today and, you know, it's, you could probably argue that it's just as crazy today as it was back then. So, um, it must be so nice to live in a, in a serene time in history. I mean, uh, as opposed to then and now, as you point out, it's, uh, quite, quite, quite a tumultuous period then as, and as now. Uh, of course, now, as opposed to your last film, instead of mushing, you're writing. Uh, as you promised last time, you know, we talked that uh, you, you'd be writing more this time. Yes, sir. Uh, how much uh, time do you get to spend uh, on horseback when you're, when you're not working on both sides of the camera? Well, I, I go back and forth between, uh, you know, Los Angeles and Colorado. And, you know, I grew up around horses and uh, so... You know, any chance we get a chance to ride, uh, I've got my my kids, you know, involved with horses, and so we. Um, one of my good friends, he has a, a big cattle ranch there in northern New Mexico, south of Durango, and um, you know we have. He's got, you know, 50, 60 bronc horses that are wild bronc horses. Um, you know, one of the scenes, I always said, if I ever do a horse film and a western. I want that man from Snowy River moment where, you know, they're bringing the herd of horses back in um, 
And so we, you know, one day had a um, scene in the movie that it, it's towards the end of the film where my character is leading a Native American tribe uh, and about 50 uh, wild horses back to the orphanage. And so we're going through snow and we come down a huge steep face. And, and when we were shooting it, you know, we knew we all could, we got to get this in one take. And stuff. <laughs> the coordinator was having a heart attack because he's like, you need a stunt. I'm like, I don't need a stunt double. I'm doing it. And it was a pretty steep face in snow. And he's like, if you go off, this is not going to end well. And I go, trust me, I'm not going off. Well, as we start down, um, one of the Wranglers who's with me goes, Brian, it's over to the left. So I start to the left and he goes, wait, no, no, it's to the right. Well, then I yank my horse back when I yanked him back and we take off and I have this, you know, 50 wild horses behind me, my foot falls out of the stirrup. And so I'm clenched down with my legs and back in the saddle and, and damn near gave myself a hernia, but I, I stayed on the horse and we got the shot and um, it's beautiful. It's a really, you know, kind of a climactic point in the movie. Um, That's you know, dedication. That is dedication for your art. So it was, yeah, we, we, there were several times I went off the horse and, you know, kept the camera rolling and came up firing the pistol in a, in a civil war scene. And um, so we, you know, we had a blast shooting the movie and, you know, to me, it's um, really exciting for, I'm really excited to share this one with, with audiences uh, worldwide. And I think uh, with the, popularity of the western genre you know and just the success of 1883 that just came out and you know we're right in that same genre um same time period um and so i think we'll leave you know audiences satisfied um with uh the journey that uh i i, I was hoping to take an audience on uh, i think it'll hit all the the, the points well now um did you do, uh, well, obviously you had to do a lot of research, but uh, what drew you to the idea of, uh, okay, I want to do something that will involve the orphan train? You know, for me, it's, it's um, I always, you know, in this particular instance, I was looking for, I wanted to do a Western, but I wanted to do something that felt like it was different and hasn't been done. And um, I love true historical movies that, um, and like The Patriot and, um, and movies that, you know, have heart and, you know, have themes that, you know, I think anybody can relate to. I mean, there's no mountain you wouldn't cross to go save your children. You know, there's no enemy you wouldn't face. And, and so um, for me, I came across the orphan train um, and I just thought, wow, this is just a fascinating time in history where you had hundreds of thousands of kids, uh, homeless being transported all over the country. And, uh, it, I just thought, well, I'm going to create a film, you know, with that as the backdrop. And so, um, that's really was the beginning and the birth of, uh, hostile territory which was previously we called the orphan train but mm -hmm. i think studio saban has done a great job with the marketing campaign mm -hmm. because it is you know it is a it, it has action i mean it's an action packed um you know it's intense and it's got everything a western audience would want in a western um but it's also got that uh historical element that i think what people would enjoy about it, historical films uh that are made well, I know uh, when we uh, posted uh, uh, something about the film uh, a few weeks ago, uh, I had a friend of mine said, hey, Native American sharpshooters, you got me right there. Right. That's, that, that's why I'm going to go see this film. Well, you know, I, I wanted in, in writing the script, I thought, OK, I don't want to do your traditional. You have the cowboys and you have the Indians and the cowboys are the good guys. The Indians are the bad guys. And so it was really important for me, the, the through line of the message, uh, the through line of the movie and the message I wanted to convey is there's good and bad within all race. And, you know, life is a lot better when we're running this race together. And, you know, I, I wanted to come up with, uh, sure, you had the, 
the hostile Native Americans, but you also had hostile Confederate troops and you had, you know, you had a mixture of everything. And so, but I really wanted our, you know, heroic arc to be a uh, Union soldier who's African American. We have this mother who's an African American mother who's looking for her child um, that was stripped from her. We, and then, you know, when I came across Company K in my research, uh, the, the Union, uh, the Native Union Sharpshooting Group from Michigan, and I thought, okay, this is these <laughs> Jack Calgrove is going to go find those native uh, sharpshooters and they're going to be a part of the Arosum. So I created a, a fictionalized arc around the, the native sharpshooters, but I wanted to mainly convey that, you know, there was Native Americans that were fighting on both sides of the Civil War. And, um, and you know, there was Native Americans that were you know, hostile and wanted to kill the white man. And then there was Native Americans who wanted peace and wanted peace for their tribes. And so, um, you know, for me, it was important to have um, our Native Americans portrayed in a heroic light as well. Um, because, you know, we see hostile Confederates, we see hostile Native Americans, we, you know, white, Black, Native American, you know, there's good and bad within all race and all culture. And, um, and so uh, that was really important for me to, to have and, I, and, and have them be on the good guys side, you know, and fighting for what's right uh, and fighting for peace. So. Well, now, Brian, this is the uh, second time that uh, you have worked with uh, this director, Brian Presley. Yeah. Uh, what, would, what would you say are his strengths as a director? Well, um, <laughs> man, uh, is he hard to work with? I, I tell you. <laughs> um, no, you know, it's 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 interesting, you know, being in front of the camera and behind the camera at the same time is, you know, now doing it twice in a row. Um, it's definitely challenging. Um, you know, you're um, you're worried about crafting all the other performances, and you know, you but you also have to be able to dial back in and you know really take an outside look at yourself and go, okay, well that worked, or no, that doesn't work, and I maybe need to change this, and and so <clears throat> you know, for me, it's you know doing independent film, doing it in any movie is a feat in itself. I mean, anytime I, you know, I know a lot of friends and people say this, anytime a movie actually goes or a TV show, I mean, it's a small miracle in itself. I mean, there's so many elements you have to organize. And so, um, <clears throat> you know, for me in this independent world and trying to make a studio level film, um, you know, I, I knew I could use and abuse myself um, and make a better movie. Um, with being in front of the camera. So <clears throat> yeah, but I, um, I, yeah, it's, it's been enjoyable. Um, and we're, you know, getting ready to set out to, to do it again. We're, you know, crafting a modern day um, uh, limited series. It's a modern day Western um, and that we're getting ready to start shooting, you know, later this summer. And um, which I think will be another really good one um well i hope it's set during the summertime that's uh but for your sake and for the sake of your crew we made sure that we are not in the snow and uh we will be in the summer up in the mountains and and um should be a good time well thank you very much once again it's been great talking with you and good luck with hostile territory thank you i appreciate your time